Fear not the dark, my friend, and let the feast begin. Hey there, my name is Alex, I am the Silvermont, and in this video we're going to be talking Dark Souls lore. In particular, we'll be discussing the final DLC for Dark Souls 3, The Ringed City. What is it? Where is it? And why is it important? We'll aim to answer those questions in this video, so let's get started. And of course, if you have any questions or theories of your own, please do share them in the comments below. Following the ashes of Ariandel directly, here is the official description for the Ringed City. This new adventure has players chasing after the slave knight Gale to the literal end of the world as he searches for the dark soul of humanity. At the close of the Age of Fire, as the world ends and all lands converge upon themselves, a lone adventurer descends into the madness of the earth and uncovers the secrets of the past. As players make their way to the fabled ringed city, they will encounter ancient beasts, a new cast of characters teetering on the edge of insanity. New armour, weapons, magic, and at the bottom of it all, a long lost city filled with new horrors for players to overcome. So what is the ringed city? Well, here is how the game presents it. As you are no doubt well aware, long ago in the first Age of Fire, Gwyn, the Sunlight King, was generous with his gifts. To his knights, to the Kingdom of New Londo, and to Seath the Scaleless, he granted fragments of his own Lord Soul. But what about the furtive pygmy who claimed the Dark Soul? The Ringed City tells us that the pygmies took the Dark Soul, and Gwyn gifted them the Ringed City, along with his youngest daughter, Filianor. This also gives us an interesting tidbit concerning the timeline of Dark Souls, for the first game tells us that Gwyn, alongside his knights, Nito and the Witch of Isolith, fought against the dragons, but until now we've known naught of men fighting alongside them. Yet in the Ringed City we learn that, supposedly, the Ringed Knights too fought against the dragons, and yet it seems Gwyn hid this from history. The men of the Ringed City created shields from the heads of arch-dragon descendants, so does this mean they were fighting against the original dragons, or in some later war? And if the Ringed Knights were only formed after Gwyn granted the Pygmies the Ringed City, it could indeed be interesting to consider, what with the timeline of events. The Dragon War might have lasted a lot longer than we thought. We know too that the armour of early men was forged in the Abyss and betrays a smidgen of life. The Abyss has always been a nebulous concept in Dark Souls, linked to humanity in so many ways, yet poison to humanity all the same. When it tells us that it betrays a smidgen of life, what do you think that could mean? I found the wording very peculiar given the context of Dark Souls, and certainly the gods cast a seal of fire upon both the armour and the inhabitants, that is to say, the Dark Sign, as speculated in another video that you can find here. The dark sign is sealing away our humanity, our life. All in all, it seems Gwyn was very eager to hide humans and everything about humanity away, to keep them subjugated. Why did Karth never mention the Ring City? Did he not know of it? Or is this merely a case of retconned history? All the same, deep within the Ring City we find Filian, or youngest daughter of Gwyn. Some bid us disturb her slumber, others beg us to leave her be. But what does her sleep mean? What would waking her up actually do? Shira informs us that as the fire fades, Filianor sleeps, all for the sake of man. Yet one of the pygmies near the outskirts of the city informs us that her rest is deceit. And clearly Gwyn didn't want her awoken considering how well hidden she is, how well guarded she is. When we find her she is clasping a peculiar egg-like object. Touching this causes it to crumble, Filianor to awaken and... Depending on how you look at it, we either dispelled an illusion much like Anor Londo, or we were sent many years into the future, to the end of the world. Considering that we start this DLC at the end of the world, at what is most likely the same time or area containing the soul of Cinder, are we moving even further ahead? Or was it merely dispelling an illusion, shattering some shield or force that kept the Ring City safe? That is up to you to decide. But what was contained within that egg? The Dark Soul itself, or those who hold it, the Pygmies. At any rate, Filianor appears to perish, aging rapidly. Was that a result of moving through time, or taking the power that kept her young? 
and we arrive in a desolate wasteland, Anne Orlando and Lothric crumbling in the distance, and it is here that we find Gael. When he came upon the Pygmy Lords, he discovered their blood had dried long ago, and so he consumed the Dark Soul. Much of Gael at this point seems to suggest that he has been hunting them, the Pygmies, for an extremely long time. Used in the battles of an endless journey, this crossbow is covered with twists and dinks, rusted with blood and made extremely brittle from overuse. And... The Greatsword of Gale, the only weapon that he kept with him from beginning to end, originally an executioner's sword made for decapitation, the blade is heavily chipped and stained with the blood of countless battles. When we first encounter Gale in the ashes of Ariando, his sword is in far better shape. He lacks the crossbow entirely and seems himself to be in better shape, body and mind. So how long has he been seeking the Dark Soul? Has he truly chased the pygmies and their humanity to the end of time itself? His method of draining humanity is markedly more direct than the art of life drain. Gale eats the pygmies, consuming the Dark Soul directly. And do you remember what we spoke about earlier? Betraying a smidgen of life, and life drain is draining humanity, so is it betraying a smidgen of humanity? But why does Gale seek it? Why, it's pigment for his lady, the painter girl. So here at the end of time, the Dark Soul is as close as it will ever be to returning to a whole state. Divided amongst humanity, split across the world, Gale now possesses much of the Dark Soul and its power. And against the Slave Knight, unkindled Ash, a failed champion, yet a champion all the same, something Gale knows he is not, thus he knows even should he obtain the Dark Soul, he is not like to survive for long. Upon his defeat, the Dark Soul is effectively made whole again, as near as it can be. Taking it to the painter in Ariandel results in her painting a new world, named after the champion. And what is this world? According to semi-official sources, she paints a new world free of the curse, free of the cycle. But going by in-game information, <laughs> it is entirely up to the player to decide the nature of this world, the fate of this painted world. But what else is there to consider in the Ringed City? Two things, namely, Shira and Medea. The former is a descendant of the gods. Shira is a sort of guardian, you might say, who looked over the Ringed City. When a mad pygmy was born and became king, it was Shira who put him down, impaling him upon her cross spear. With the king undying, however, Shira locked herself away with him in perpetuity, only emerging at the end of all days, the end of all things, to hunt the player who ignores her plea to leave Filianor in peace. Here she introduces herself as Daughter of the Duke, and how many Dukes do we know of in Dark Souls? The most famous, of course, would be Seath. Yet Shira doesn't look too much like a dragon. Could she truly mean Seath? Yes, I think so. Just have a look at her crown. Crown of Shira, knight in service to Filianor, finely crafted with silver and fashioned with a pearl from a man-eater shell. Even if we connect it with her referring to herself as Daughter of the Duke, it doesn't confirm anything, but it is a strong connection. The man-eater shells, after all, were found by the dozen in the Duke's domain. She is also a friend to Medea, a descendant of the ancient dragons. But is she Seath's biological daughter, or merely adopted? That's up to you to decide. Either way, it's a possibility that she is Priscilla's sister, if you believe the theory of Priscilla being a daughter to Seath. As for me, I would see it being more the case that Shira was adopted by Seath, if there is any connection there. But what about Medea? A descendant of the Archdragons, he was raised by the gods and given the duty to eternally battle the Dark. At some point, though, he returned to the Ringed City. Unlike Artorius, Medea seems to have found some degree of success in combating the Dark and the Abyss, partially by apparently consuming it. Yet there are two things I feel worth noting here. Medea had a soul, and he is succumbing to the Dark. I believe these two things are connected. The question, do dragons have souls, has been a topic of some contention for the longest time. The first game suggests that dragons do not have souls, the gaping dragon, 
and not a true arch dragon, and Calamite, whether or not he's a true arch dragon is another topic of contention. Both lack souls. Seemingly, Seath only has a soul granted to him by Gwyn. Then we have Dark Souls 2, wherein the ancient dragon appears to be a reanimated arch dragon, reanimated using a giant's soul. Sin, the slumbering dragon, has his own soul, but this could be a case of him being a descendant that has evolved to contain a soul. But what about Medir? Personally, I believe that the gods granted Medir his soul, a gift, as Gwyn was wont to hand out. I also believe it is because Medea was granted this soul that he eventually was overcome by the Dark. That is purely my opinion, however, for I believe it makes more sense for dragons to not have souls, given finding them was such an important act for Gwyn and Co. I also believe this would explain how Medea succumbs to the Dark, his soul being eroded and consumed by the Dark, as happens to all souls in the Abyss. I choose to believe that the Archdragons themselves were unaffected by the Dark, but it could be the case that the Dark is simply that big of a deal, that nothing and no one is immune from it. There you have it. There are of course some elements of the Ring City that I didn't cover in this video, such as the Locusts, but I touched on everything that I wanted to. What is the Ring City? A hidden city given to the Pygmies by Gwyn, kept secret, away at the end of the world. Many have attempted to plunder it for the Dark Soul, including a Legion of Knights whose legend would go on to inspire the ruined Sentinels from Dark Souls 2. In the end, it all stems back to Gwyn and his fear, his loathing, his distrust, but ultimately his fear of humans, humanity, and the Dark. And it all culminates in a battle between two men, two small insignificant men grappling over what remains of the Dark Soul. I don't know. Maybe it's just the way we are. I'll stick you in my prayers. A fine dark soul to you.